Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea Benoa and I'm super excited that you're here. This is me keeping my word to staying committed to helping you find your true self through a personal relationship with Jesus and walking boldly in that identity fulfilling purpose. Thank you for choosing to go on this journey with me. Now let's get into today's business. Oh wait, oh wait, have you subscribed yet? Please do and also share this with someone. I'm truly grateful. Now let's get into it. Hi guys. Thank you so much for connecting with us today. My name is Ajwa Benoa and welcome. In Philippians 1 verse 6, Bible says that, and I'm certain that a God who has begun a good thing in you would carry it until it is finally finished until the day of Christ Jesus. And so while we are still on this earth, there are so many things that come in and we need to equip ourselves to be able to live that abundant life that he's called us to live. And so today we are talking about an important factor or component that affects the fulfillment of our purpose. And I have EJ, Emmanuel John Saki, joining me today to talk about this subject. So what's up? Cool. What's up? I'm fine. Yeah. So uh, we are talking about purpose. And I mean, there are so many things that even on our last session, we mentioned that when it comes to purpose, it isn't really like a destination. It's actually like becoming like who God created us to be. And that is basically purpose for me. And so there are certain things that definitely affect what God does in our lives. Since he didn't create us like robots, he needs our permission yeah. to bring certain things to pass in our lives. I mean, he is God. He can do whatever he pleases, but he also wouldn't go against his word. And so we know that this is a partnership between man and God. And when we all agree and come together, mighty things come out and the kingdom of God is expanded. So um, what, what are some things that you feel are hindrance? when it comes to us fulfilling, you know, our purpose. All right, and um, thank you. And the last time, I, I remember we concluded that purpose shouldn't be um, idolized, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so basically, we, we, we are saying that purpose is God. Mm. And before one can fulfill purpose, we need to have a very close relationship with God through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so God expects us that we begin to think like the way he thinks. Mm. The, Book in Romans chapter 12 says something really interesting. That I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And then it continues to say that, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Mm. So it means that mm -hmm. in our work... You know, I, that's actually the scripture I had opened. I wanted to just read that. But there's something the NLT, the New Living Translation okay. says, and let me just read it so that you continue. Right. The NLT says that, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Yeah. Great. So it is clear from this scripture that one of the things that God needs to, you know, help us, let me, yeah. let me use that, to fulfill purposes, the way we think. Mm. It is very, very important to God. So right. we have to understand that, you know, we all grew up from a background that gives us a special way of thinking mm. that might not conform to God's own. Right. So Bible says that we should no more be conformed to that particular kind of thinking, but we should begin to think like the way God thinks. Mm. And then that is basically how we fulfill purpose. Yeah. It is clear. Everybody is the product of how they think. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Everybody is the product of how they think. When you meet somebody. Oh, Bible says, as a man thinks. In a sad way. Yeah, so that, is, see. that yeah. is it. So you meet somebody, however we are today, is because of how we, we were thinking and how we are thinking. Mm. So it's very important to God that we, we, we think like the way he thinks before mm. we are able to even think about fulfilling purpose. Yeah. That's so true. I remember one of our ministers at church spoke profoundly on this subject, talking about even if we want to make maximum impact, we need to start from a place. And that, has to, that place has to be, you know, thinking right. Yeah. And 
one of the the things that all great people have in common is the way they think. Yeah, and that message was really, really profound. You know, there's there's this quote also that says that your your feet can never take you where your mind has not been. So when we are, if we are talking about the mind, what we are listening to, yeah. you know, it impacts what we believe mm-hmm. and what we believe impacts the things we do. So the actions, if I don't believe something, I wouldn't act in, in the direction of that thing. And so yes. we realize that the things that we are feeding on, the things that are getting into us, it's very important and we need to really, you know, take note of those things. Exactly. Yeah. So. The, the mind is very powerful. In fact, the mind is one of the powerful things. Not one, let me say. It mm. is the most powerful thing that God ever gives mm. to man. You know, because um, it has the ability to even stop God from what he wants to do. Mm. Because, um, you know, the mind can contain God mm. and can limit God in one's life. Yeah. Do you understand? So Bible says that God deals with everybody according to their level of faith. Mm. You know, somehow faith is connected to how we think. Mm. Yes, so if God deals with everybody according to um, their faith, it means that God deals with everybody according to the way they think. You know, so that when I was listening to one man of God, he says that um, this, this scripture, God is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly yeah. above all things that we could ever ask or think. So God doesn't only answer the things that we ask. He answers the things that we think as well. Mm. God deals with everyone according to their level of faith. Mm. So in, in our work with God, we need to try to make sure that our thinking pattern does not limit God. Because, you know, God respects, God, let me, let me put it this way, God respects us. So however we think, God wants to, you know, give honor to it. Mm. So however you think about yourself, however you think about God, however you think about a situation, God wants to respect it. So he wants to respect every single So limit. God will meet you where you are. Exactly. And so this, this topic actually, is to help us not contain God mm. so that our work with him is going to be free. So mm. purpose is going to be some, something that is simple for us. You know, one thing that God did um, to Moses mm. that I really learned a lot from when he sent Moses to go and free the people of... Um, the Israel, he, yeah. He, yes. So one of the things that Moses wanted to do was to, you know, contain God in should I put it in a definition? So mm. he asked God, when I go, and then they ask me, who sent me? Who should I say you are? God knew that the moment he gives a definition or a part of him to Moses, it is going to be a God to them. Yeah. Do you understand? So um, God didn't want that to happen. So he just told Moses to go and say, I am, I am that, I am that I am. That is, that is simple. That is how God can. And, and, and that is limitless, actually. Yes. Because yes, where, wherever position you get to, you know, God is God. He is. Yes. So it's not like yesterday what you saw me to be. Today, if there's something that matches up to who I am, yes. I am in that moment. That so I am. He is God. And yes. that's just it. That yeah. Is, yes. You know, there's this um, quote also that this uh, minister also said when he was, you know, ministering. And he says that, the difference between where we start and where we end is partly based on our thinking. The difference between where we start and where we end is partly based on our thinking. There's a scripture that says slaves were riding on horses and then the princes were walking on foot, which is an error. Oh. So if you don't think right, if you don't really know and understand certain things, you have access to certain things, but you wouldn't claim it. And people who just by knowledge came into contact with those things will claim it as if it was theirs. And you realize that in the Christian work, we see a lot of these things happening and we will end up going, you know, going to question God as to why, why are the unbelievers, you know, prospering, we are living, you know, righteous lives, why is it that we are struggling and all of that. And so I feel like, as you said, the way we think, and it affects even our perspective of how, you know, how we see things happen in this world. So this really goes um, a long way to help our work with him. But let me ask you this. We are talking about not conforming to the patterns of this world. Let's see, maybe I'm, maybe I'm 30 years right now, and I've lived with, culture is a way of life. And culture is something that I've lived with, how I do things. And um, as a result of where I grew up and, you know, 
um, what I've been taught, what I've been told, what I've seen, what I've experienced. It all forms a part of, you know, my culture. And now Bible is saying that I shouldn't conform to the patterns of the world. I shouldn't conform to that. But here's the case that for 30 solid years, I've been conforming. And when you are building something, it takes a long time to build. But when you are destroying, I get that. you know, you get that thing. So yeah. how do we actually, you know, practicalize this in our lives? That is why it is important to know that this is a process. Hmm. You get it. So Bible says in the second verse that I read that, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay. By the renewing of your mind. So mm. as time goes on, as your relationship with God grows and you get to know God more through his word, you, you, you make sure that these things become part of you. Mm. By the way you think, you adjust your thinking, you, are, you adjust your belief system mm. to fit God. That is it. So... It is not something that, okay, we, we can't limit God by saying it can't happen overnight. Mm. Some do, but then if um, yours... But actually, God is a God of process. Yes. If you've taken like 10 years to, to build a habit, you don't just break a habit a day. Uh -huh. So we must understand that it's a process, as you said, and it's going to take us committing to daily, like... Even when you don't feel like it, you need to, to, yeah, you need to do it, like and decide to do it because it's in the consistency that you're able to break off certain things in your life. That's and as true. you said, we are not limiting God. God is able to do. But you see, when, when God wants to do something in your life and you, that a thing is being done for you, you're unconcerned, oh, yeah. you know. So when it comes to a consistency, discipline and commitment, we must also do our part. As God is always willing, That's even the people that Jesus raised, the people that he performed miracles, you know, they have to do something. Get up and walk. If he doesn't get up, how can he walk? walk? Yeah, that so there's always something that that's, it's a partnership. And so as the Bible is saying that we shouldn't conform, it means that the way that we are used to, we have to be intentional about, you know, shifting. And as you said, like studying the word of God, we don't just read it like that. We look at the patterns, how things are done. You read all these books and you realize that it's, it's actually wisdom for living. A lot of these things, when we take it from the word like that, we wouldn't have to go through learning by hard knocks when mm -hmm. we just obey directly from the word of God. Yeah, so. That is it. So, you know, until we change our mind, until our minds are renewed, our lives can't be renewed. Mm. Our lives can't change. We need to take note of that. Because um, when you look at the life of Jesus, before Jesus could do anything, he speaks to people. You know, when you want to, you want to make a miracle happen, you have to adjust their minds. Mm. You know, the Bible says that yeah. Jesus got somewhere. He was not able to do miracles because miracle. people didn't have the correct mind for it. So just as I'm saying, the mind is so powerful that until you change it, your, your lives can change. Mm. You, you can't have a change of life. Mm. Before Jesus did any miracle, he spoke to them. Like, he made them believe something new. If, let's say, you are, you are, you are blind, mm. it will somehow make you, think, make you think something else so that mm. you can see. And until your mind changes like that way, you can't receive such a miracle. Mm. So it's very important that as time goes on, just as you are saying, we, we study the patterns of you know, how God thinks, how, what God is teaching us. We study those patterns and then we adjust them in the way we think and we adjust our belief systems to mm. it. It, it yeah. really helps. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Even Bible says that out of the abundance of the hearts, the mouth speaks. But how does things get into our hearts? First comes through, through our mind. mind. Yes. So whatever I'm listening to, what people are saying, that you, you know, funny enough, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You know, fear also comes by hearing. hearing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and true. so, between faith and fear, if there's fear, you, you begin to doubt and where's the place of faith? But if we are feeding ourselves with the word of God, it drives out, you know, fear. Mm -hmm. And we are able to hold on to the promises of God. We are able to hold on to the word of God. And as we meditate, as we dwell on God's word, it is filling our heart. And now we begin to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, the things we speak, we don't just speak. That's when people say, Oh, this one day I just said it like that. No, you cannot just say things like that. Yeah. You've, you've meditated on the thing, you know, because it, it first came through as uh -huh. a thought before it got into your heart. Then it came out of your mouth. 
And so that's why we need to be very careful of the things we actually say. Because this thing has gone through processes and before it's coming out, make sure that what you're bringing out is life. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, we are going to be judged by every word, even yes. idle words that, you know, we, we speak out. And so this is a way that we are stewarding even what God has given unto us. So in fulfilling our purpose, we need to really understand that if our mind is not, we don't have the capacity to receive or believe, it starts from the mind. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the capacity to, to actually hold on to something to the point of even believing and the thing sinking into your heart, how do you receive it? You cannot. So it's very important that we stay in line with what God is doing on this earth and, you know, um, work in accordance with, with that. So, so that is how, that is how we, we can change our mind. You know, mm-hmm. Somebody will be asking, okay, we should change our mind. How are we going to do it? So it's basically the things that we feed ourselves with every mm-hmm. day. So... If you were in the world and then you used to listen to worldly music and you listen to you watch, you know, movies that you are not supposed to watch, all those styles, and then you listen to certain people, certain category or certain kind of people, and your life was the way it was. The moment you come to Christ, you need to understand that you are a new person. Yeah. All these things need to change. Yeah. You have to change those that you listen to. You have to make sure you are listening to life, just as you said. Mm. And you have to make sure that you are seeing the right stuff. You are listening to them so that these things will build faith mm. in you. Yeah. You have to consciously leave the old culture mm. and then come to the new. That is how your mind will change. That is how you can begin to see things and think like God does. Yeah. So that is it. But in, the, in, in this week where the, like, there's so much pressure, you know, and sometimes you don't even realize you're conforming. <laughs> there's so much pressure and this is in the wake of wokeness. This is what is trending. This is what everyone is doing. How do we move ourselves, not be caught up in the wave of this is what is trending and always be alert that even in the trends, the devil can, you know, work his agenda through it and move us, shift us from the plan of God for our lives. So how do we, with all the pressure as youth, social media, TV screens everywhere. Like, how do we really um, stay on, on this All path? right. So in our time, basically, I'll say we, we have to be intentional mm. as Christians. Okay. Because um, God will not come down to force you to, you know, ignore certain things and not look at certain things. We yeah. have to be intentional about the things that we follow. So if you are on social media, you have to be careful of the people that you follow. Yeah. And the things that you view. So um, that is it. You, you, just, you just have to be intentional in this time, or else you'll be caught up. Yeah. You, you, you give in without realizing. Yeah. So we need to be intentional. If you are on social media, you have to make sure that you are following the right people in the community to whatever you are seeing. You just have to be intentional. You know, you know, just as I heard you say something, when you know these things, when I look at them, I'll be tempted to go and then masturbate or do that. You have to be intentional. Know that I am not supposed to be here. Don't mm. go. Don't try it mm. at all. You no, know, we, ha- we are in a time where people are trying to give excuses to, you know, be involved in a lot of nasty stuff. And then when the falling comes, they, they try to blame it or something. No, but we have to be intentional. Yeah. Just don't go there. You are not supposed to be there. We have to know what we have become, what God has made us. You know, our present state should not allow us to go certain places. Mm. There are certain things we are not supposed to be listening to. We have to be intentional. Nobody will yeah, force you. Yeah. You know, today, everybody is having phone. In the phone, you have the world in it. So you can stay yeah. in your room, in your corner, and do whatever you want with it. Nobody will see it. So you have to be intentional. What do you use your mobile phones for? That is it. So yeah. basically, let's be intentional. Yeah, if it's not good sure. for you, don't go there. Mm. Don't view it if, you know, it's going to, it's not going to help your thinking. If it's yeah. not going to help your relationship with God, mm. don't go there. That yeah. is it. And even as we bring this session to a close, um, before you come in, I just want to state that sometimes we try to do all of these things by our strength. This is spiritual matters. And the good news is that God calls us to approach him, approach the throne room of grace, that we find help in times of of need. So you find yourself um, struggling, you find yourself doing things that, I mean, they say that the Spirit's, is willing that but the flesh is weak the flesh is weak because you are feeding the flesh over the spirit when you feed the spirit by you know studying the word of god when you feed the spirit by 
denying your flesh. The spirit overpowers the flesh and you know the strength of God comes alive in you and you're able to do the things that you never even thought possible. And so in all of this, let us not even try or attempt to do anything by our own strength. It is God who grants us the ability, the grace to be able to do all these things that we are talking about. And so, yeah, what would you say even as we um, wrap up? All right. So um, to conclude, I would say um, the mind is the most powerful thing that God has blessed us with. Mm. And then it can make and it can unmake us. Right. If you want to be wealthy, you know, people, people, and it's true what people say that, uh, you know, the rich are rich not because they have money, it's because of the kind of mindset that they, they have. have. Yeah. Yes. So let's, let's try and build the right mindsets even as we are working with God and get rid of things that we know is going to be a hindrance to that. Mm. And trust me, um, when you begin to do this in few weeks, in few months, in few years, you are going to love how God is going to be working with yeah. you. Yeah. And the things that God will be bringing you in your yeah. life. Yeah. That's so, so true. That That's so true. And even as you said, as you continue to do it, there's this saying that there's this thing that I say that when you do something consistently, you realize that when you start the thing, it doesn't feel like, let's say you want to, you want to keep a discipline of like praying every day. Sometimes you don't feel like praying, but you still do it, not because you want to pray, but because of the decision you've made to pray. And what yeah, the benefit that's going to come out of it, spending time with God. And as you do that thing, you are dedicated, you are committed. I'm going to do this, whether I feel like it or not, I'm going to do it. And you realize that when you do something over a period of time, the spirit behind it like begins to empower you to actually continue. So now it gets to a point where the thing that you were doing as a chore, as a something difficult, as a, something that you are using to pass time, it now becomes something that you actually love to do. Something that, you know, you do and you're happy to do it. And so let's be consistent in talking about, you know, the mind. It takes quite a while to break down, you know, the strongholds. But God is good and God is powerful and he can do everything, even beyond what we ask or think of. And so, yeah. And not, and not forgetting, um, one of the few things that can help us very well is the kind of people that we surround ourselves with. Right. We need to take note of mm-hmm. that. We need to guard ourselves because evil communications corrupt yeah. good manners. Yeah. The kind of friends that you move with every day, you boil with every day, you vibe with every day, somehow affects the way you think. That's so true. That's so true. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for coming again today. God and bless you. I mean, even as mm-hmm. we continue to engage on this, you know, purpose discussion, God is, you know, birthing something new in us that is causing us to even delve into it more to discover who he actually is and learn more about him as he leads us in the path of this life so god bless you so much for coming and i'm sure we'll connect again all right so guys thank you so much for you know connecting with us again today and please once again subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that Uh, You do not miss anything that gets uploaded here. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you for connecting with me today. I hope this has inspired you. Please share this and also subscribe so you do not miss out on anything. See you on the next one. Bye.